Okay. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. We'll take a look at these questions this morning. Uh, first question we have is, okay, let's see if we can read this. If we have a test on Monday, we'll be getting a study guide today or tomorrow. Okay. Um, let's take a look at this updated version of our schedule. Remember, because of this, uh, uh, whatever we're going through right now, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, let's show you the schedule for you so that you guys know. Okay. So we're going to go to our browser and here's our browser and let's look for, um, I'm going to say something here to you guys. I updated this stuff. Uh, some students in my office hours from calculus. This is a different course, but you guys really have the same schedule. So I want to remind you guys here. Here's the schedule here. Now, this isn't just for calculus. I'll update yours today if it's different. Um, as you guys can see, the next test, this is going to be the same schedule for you guys, is down here. If you could see that test number three, week 13, it is May 4th. May 4th. Oh, okay. There's something that I want to think that just hit me. Okay. May 4th, ladies and gentlemen, is the next test. And so we are in April, what, 23rd? So you got a couple more weeks. Sorry about that. So anyway, I let you guys know about that. That's going to be the next test. And then you're going to have, um, you know, so it'll be May 4th anyway. So I hope that answered uh, the question for a few of you. Uh, I guess, and then we have, we have what? Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to uh, our browser. No, not our browser. Let's go back to the comment section. Okay, now we have uh, another question here, right? So we answer this question. Can someone please tell me the pages we need to do book work from 5.2? Uh, well, what you can do at the end of those videos, I typically have the book work assigned, okay? So 5.2, though, if I look at my, that's on the binomial. Look at that binomial distribution, part one, part two. It's something like, if I take a quick glance, something like five to 35 odd. Okay, so some of you guys can verify that. Um, 5.2 book work, something like this, 5 to 35 odd. And I'm going to say take a look also um, at the web work too. So you got both of those. So I hope we got that question out of the way, Jackie. All right. And so here's what we have here. Here's where we're at. So yesterday, oh, yeah, let's go to the browser. And I can remind you guys in the browser. Let's go to the appropriate class. Math 227. I'm going to say go to down here. And I mentioned to you guys, I'm going to put post some examples. I sure did. All right. I sure did. So these are some of the problems that we worked on yesterday. Oh, thank. Okay. Thank you, guys. You can do 5 to 29 odd, I guess. That's fine. Um, these are some of the questions I promised you guys. Okay, so make sure you review these questions. This is uh, part of your, your lecture, part of those notes I worked with for you guys. And uh, double check, because I did work on 72, uh, you know, if we look at 72 minutes, that's an, an inter interval, so we talked about that, and we have to convert our, our mu, as you guys can see, and we did use complement rule 14 and 15. So these are all the questions we didn't get to from our worksheet 
that I promised you that I would. So now, now that means I am up to date with this stuff. And what am I looking for? Okay, I'm looking for this stuff here. All right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, this stuff on and off, it's driving me nuts. My on, off, overlays, oh, whatever. It's starting to really... Uh, all right. Okay, so now, if you notice what comes next, after Poisson, you notice we get the normal probability distribution. Okay, this is also known as the bell-shaped curve. Now, these notes are online. But I'm going to take a look at this stuff. I'm going to try to put it in. Um, let me see if I can find it. You want to go to 227. You want to go to the normal distribution. All right, let's go to the iPad. All right, you guys can see that there, I guess. The iPad. So I want to ask you guys a really quick question. Hopefully you guys can answer this. Uh, when you're looking at this online, how clear is that writing when I'm in Word? Right? How clear is that? How clear? I mean, because I have it here pretty clear for me. But I want to know, is it as clear as all the other lectures? Are you seeing that? Just kind of quick, curious. Normal distribution. Oh. All right, let me do something here. Thank you, guys. Let's make sure this thing is clear here. Yeah, that's a bit odd. Yeah, it looks blurry, doesn't it? Okay, let me do something quick here. Not quite sure that looks blurry there. Try something here. So let me do something like this. I want you guys to go to the comments. Let me disconnect. Let's just see if we could come up clear here because we need this to be clear. Okay, we're back, and let's go to the iPad. Yeah, it looks blurry, doesn't it? What is this? Ah, blurry, 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 blurry.
Yeah, word looks blurry. Okay, well, whatever. I'm going to get out of that Word document mode. Not going to use Word. I'll figure that part out later. Now, does that look clear? Does the iPad writing look clear for you guys? How does that how does that look for you guys here? All right, thank you, you guys. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, we got some different sort of opinion here. Weird. Maybe it's in the preferences. Let's see some preferences here. Uh, all right, preference settings. Um, video. Let's look at some quick prep. I'm going to look at a few things here at my end. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm, uh, you know, there's some some weird. I'm looking at something here. My screen doesn't look clear. And uh, it's uh, bothering me. And I'm wondering why. Well, let's take a look then. I know what's kind of weird here is if I go to the browser then that's clear. Is that true? The browser looks very clear. All right, how does that browser look to you guys? So are you guys saying here that this uh, that this sheet is blurry? You're saying that this uh, bow shape curve is blurry here today? Looks okay to me. What I see is blurry. This looks a, a bit odd to me. Anyway, okay, well, let's uh, figure some of this stuff out because it's, um, if I go to displays. All okay, right, well, whatever. So let's go to the browser here to talk about this. Here's the browser. 
I want to tell you guys that recall the type of pictures of data you got when you created a histogram for a frequency table, right? Um, our relative frequency table, when you gather data, there is a special picture where most of the data is centered in the middle around the mean and tapers off significantly as the data values become extreme. So what I drew here for you guys is a picture of a distribution that's continuous, continuous random variable. So here's the picture. And let's go down. What I want to remark here is you have what we call a bell-shaped curve, right? This distribution is known formally as a bell-shaped curve here. All right, so I'm going to say something here to you. I'm going to say, what can be represented by a normal distribution? Things that could be represented, what we say normally, ladies and gentlemen, is things that either grow naturally, behave naturally, or are reproduced or manufactured identically by man or by nature. Okay, those are things that behave what we say normally. So the first kind of setting I have here is the height of men is thought of as, you know, men are supposed to grow, you know, every guy, if you want to look at it that way, every guy is reproduced by nature over and over again, right? So every guy is reproduced. And if I say to you, okay, every guy is reproduced, Right, going to this bow shaped curve. Here's a guy. Nature produces this guy over and over again. Okay, that's what nature does. The problem is nature doesn't get it right, just like man doesn't get it right. Every guy that you see is not the same, at least in terms of you know, a lot of dimensions, uh, like height, weight, you know, color, whatever, right? All these different factors. So here's a guy who's supposed to be reproduced over and over again, and he simply isn't. So what happens now is we do have a model of what we'd say a typical guy, and that model includes, in this case, they, they're saying that the height of men, which is 67 inches, and a standard deviation of 2.9 inches, right? Typically, men are 67 inches tall. Typically. And if you see right here in the middle, we're going to let X be the height of men. We have the mean. So typically, men, in terms of their height, are around the middle for this special distribution. And of course, the further to the right you go, the larger the number, you have men who are taller than 67 inches. And you have less and less of those. Now, similarly, in the other direction, men who are smaller than 67 inches, they're to the left. So what I want to say to you guys is that um, this model, in terms of a frequency table, the graph, if we drew a histogram, would have most of the data in the center, and the extremes will taper off above and below the mean. This is a normal distribution. Remember, nature tries to reproduce a guy over and over again, but you know something? Not very good. And that's kind of an interesting phenomenon. There's nothing unique about the height of men. You can even have the height of women. You know, nature's supposed to produce a lady the same way twice. It's not always successful. So because of that, because it's not always successful, um, you have an issue. Okay? You guys okay with that? So that's kind of what's going on. 
Um, let me check something here really quick. Let's go to the next example. And the next example is always a bit fun, right? The next example for people, if I say to you, okay, let's consider now the weight of women. The weight of women. Are women all the same weight? And you might say, uh, no, Mr. Judge. Women are not the same what? Weight. Okay? So they're not the same weight. Ah, sorry about that. What do you guys know about the weight of women? Anybody know something about women and their weight? They don't weigh the same? By this model, let's draw a picture of a lady. Here's a lady, and what do we know about these ladies? There's a typical weight for women. And we have 107.6 pounds with a standard deviation in this model of 12.6. And this is women in the U.S., okay? So we're going to let X be the weight of women here. So as you guys know, nature doesn't produce the same thing twice. And because of that, you know, you have women who weigh more than 107.6 pounds Less and less women, so the further to the right you go, the higher the value, but you have less or a smaller frequency. The further to the left you go, you have a smaller value. Less women weigh less than 107.6 pounds, so what you're looking at, again, is a normal distribution, things that behave normally. All right, so this is what happens uh, in terms of that. Now, let's go down to the next example here. And I'll say to you, IQ scores. Now, what I know is that IQ scores are also normally distributed. So for every human being now, I'm going to say you're in the context of a human being. Right? Here's a human. Your intelligence can be measured. All right, so I don't know if you guys knew this, but intelligence is also measured. And it's measured uh, by a test. They give you a test, and then they say, okay, um, you know, the typical person has a score, a mean of 100, and, of course, it has a standard deviation as well. So I wrote that down for you guys here. A mean of 100, standard deviation of 15. So the average intelligence in terms of some measure is 100. All right? It's 100. And obviously, you guys know there are people who are smarter, people who are very smart, people who are highly intelligent. And that means that the further to the right you go in terms of these IQ scores, right, you have less and less in terms of the frequency. So... More intelligent people, there's not a lot of them. And if you have really intelligent people, people who are geniuses, um, there's less and less of those. You also have people at the other end. And at the other end, you're going to have people who are less intelligent than the mean. And those are IQ scores that are less than 100. And when you get further and further to the left there, what you're going to have here is less and less people that are lower in, in terms of intelligence or intelligence uh, IQ scores. So that behavior, that phenomena, since nature doesn't produce man the same way twice, we think we do, we hope nature does, really doesn't. What happens now is simply that, um, you know, nature doesn't get it right. Nature can't duplicate things um, exactly the same way. And so that's kind of an interesting thing to me. 
then anything that's supposed to be duplicated over and over again isn't exactly done. It's not done that way. So you guys know. It's fascinating to me. So nature doesn't duplicate things twice. There's some variation. Uh, but there is a typical, we take the mean, and if we can see that on a frequency table, most of the data is in the center, and it tapers off at the extreme values, and that data is normally, it behaves in a normal way, okay? Typical way, that's where they get the word normal, probability distribution. And then you say, okay, what about the next situation? Well, in the next situation... Um, man, just like the water bottles you guys buy, man can also not duplicate the same things twice in the same way. There's an issue with men, people. You see, machines are created and used to fill in that water in your water bottle. So now you say, oh, okay, do I have a nice water bo bottle? And you do. And uh, I don't know. I guess they kind of look like this. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to draw a nice cup. I know your water bottles don't look like that. So here's a nice cup. So the volume of water placed in this, is just supposed to have uh, 500 milliliters in this. Now, you guys know that you really don't have 500 milliliters. You may say what typically gets put in here, the average, is 508.6 milliliters, right? We're saying this has a mean of 508.6 with a standard deviation of 1.5 milliliters. Now, what that says for us here, so you guys know, is that the machine puts a little bit extra. Now, there's a reason the machine puts a little bit extra. It puts extra, ladies and gentlemen, because by law, it has to satisfy the label, right? There's truth in labeling laws. I mean, supposed to be. So they need to put more than that 500. And they're saying here, this 508.6, this is machines putting this in. Now, machines aren't perfect either. Machines will put a little bit more in some bottles and a little bit less than others. And... What you'll see here is for the normal distribution now, if X is the volume of water filled into a 500 milliliter, we're going to let that be X. The typical was 508.6. And there's going to be some bottles that have more and some that have left, less if that behavior or that frequency table looks like a bell, well, then that's normally distributed. And it will. Because not even machines could get things right the same time, you know, every time. So nature can't reproduce the same thing. Not even can man. Man can't reproduce the same thing. There's always going to be some variation here. But there's going to be the typical, which is the mean, the average. And then you have the consistency, which is your standard deviation. So, so ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, this is how we work here with this sort of situation now. So here's another situation. And incidentally, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, the duration of pregnancies also is not, uh, or sorry, also is normally distributed. The duration, the average day. So here's a lady who's pregnant here. Let's draw a lady, a pregnant lady. Here's a nice pregnant lady. Okay. Now, this pregnant lady, believe it or not, the duration, how long she's pregnant, you probably tell me is nine months. Well, nope. The typical number of days is 268 days. So women are pregnant for about 268 days, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the standard deviation, though, is 15 days. So that's almost two weeks. That's interesting. Almost two weeks. So what that means is women typically are going to be pregnant for 268 days, right? But there are some women who will be pregnant for longer. 
Now, that's less and less the further along you go, increasing the days. And there's women who actually aren't pregnant for 268 days. They're pregnant for, for less than that. Well, there's less women, again, that's, there's a frequency there. So I'm going through, ladies and gentlemen, this concept of a normal distribution here. And as you guys can see, even being pregnant, there's a typical amount of days, but nature doesn't get things right either. Not every woman is pregnant for 268. Some are more, some are less. But if the behavior looks like what we're seeing here, then we can call that a normal distribution, and it will be. Believe it or, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, body temperature. We typically think our body temperature is 98.6. That's normal. Well, guess what? Here's a human being here. And when they take that human being's temperature, um, some of them are actually going to be, and this is supposed to be considered normal. Nobody has a temp, you know, nobody has a fever. But when you gather data for body temperatures, the mean, ladies and gentlemen, what's typical is 98.2. So it's, it's not 98.6. Let's get rid of that six. It's 98.2. So 98.2 with a standard deviation of 0.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So even if we were to, you know, randomly take people's temperatures, we're going to find that um, they're going to be, oh, what, less and less that are above this and then less and less that are below this. So even temperature, ladies and gentlemen, is normally distributed. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's going on here now. Let's go to some facts about the normal distribution, okay? Yeah, let's go to some facts. So the distribution, first of all, you guys really want to know is symmetric about the mean here. So I drew a nice picture here for a normal distribution. And what I'm saying here is that this distribution is symmetric. Now, do you guys know what symmetric means? Who can tell me what symmetric is? What is symmetric? What does that even mean? Well, typically what I ask a class here, here's what I really ask people. Is there anyone in the room here who's beautiful, right? Who's beautiful in the room? Okay, anyone? I know there's a slight delay. Anybody here might be considered beautiful. Anybody? All right, well, let's see. All right, Joanna has a comment here. Equal. Well, let me give you guys the artist's definition of beauty. All right, let's give you guys the artist. The reason I bring this up is because here's a face. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Talking about beauty and I can't even draw a face. Here's what I'm really getting at. Artists define beauty as a face that is symmetric. So if you have a symmetric face, then you are considered what? Beautiful. Is that right? So I want people to go to the mirror and take a look and kind of answer those questions here, right? See what you guys think. See who's beautiful. If you're beautiful, your face is symmetric. If your face is not so symmetric, what's the deal? 
then you may not be considered what? Beautiful. So put a mirror and um, put a mirror and do what? Reflect that mirror across your face. If you see some symmetry, then guess what? You could consider yourself beautiful. All right. That's the deal. If you put the mirror across your face and you tilt that and you see some non-symmetry, well, then I got some bad news for you. Um, you may not be as beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, don't blame me. Blame the artist. This is their definition of beauty, a symmetric face. Now, the truth is all of our faces are not symmetric, although some people are more symmetric than others. Than others. So we have people who have some very symmetric faces, and in the world of art, they're considered beautiful. Um, fine. But, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, yada, yada, yada. That's external beauty. We're all beautiful. And so I just want to let you guys know this is a very big deal for us in our distribution, okay? So they're symmetric. This bell is symmetric. So if I put a mirror here across the mean... Okay, if I put a mirror here, what you see on the right in terms of the area is the same as what you see on the left in terms of the area. Also, I want to remark, if you were to take a calculus course, that function here, I know I, I skipped over it. If I go all the way back here, the probability distribution function for the normal is right up here. I, I gave this for the calculus students. That's a heavy, heavy-duty formula. And in fact, we're looking at areas under the curve, and oh, those are things that Calculus 2 students do because this is an improper integral because we're integrating from minus infinity to infinity, and we're going to find that the area for this distribution is 1. And that's consistent from a statistics standpoint where I add the values of x, and it's 1. So these are going to be some important details that we're going to use. We're going to use the fact that the curve is symmetric and that the area under that curve, under the bell, is equal to 1. So that's why I go through this song and dance for you guys, okay? So I'm setting the table for something very important here. This is the game I play and say to people, what percent of the bell is shaded? And we're going to play that game. So what percent of the bow here is shaded? So if I say to you guys, look at this question here. I'm going to play the game. Tell me, and I know there's a delay, what percent of the bow is shaded? Anybody want to tell me? What percent of the bell is shaded? Anyone? Take a look. This is this is pretty simple to do. What percent of that bell is actually shaded? Thank you, Cassandra. Thank you, Catherine. Here's what we're going to say. This is, oh, let's find a nice color, though. Good. You guys are good with this, right? A hundred percent of this bow, ladies and gentlemen, is shaded. So we have Joanna. We have Cassandra. We have Catherine. Leopoldo. We have... Jessica Ortiz, all of you guys are correct. Good. You're on the right track here, okay? This is how this works. Good for you guys here. All right. Now, we're going to use symmetry and the following shaded regions here. Let's proceed here. Notice, if 100% of the bell is shaded and 
this bell is symmetric about the mean. What that means is for the right side, 50% of the bell is shaded. Does that sound okay to you guys? And for the left side, 50% of the bell is also shaded. So isn't it true then that the left area plus the right area down here, right? 50% plus 50% will be 100%. So 100% of that bell is shaded, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, that's what's going on here. 50% on the left, 50% on the right, because of symmetry, because of beauty. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. So, you know, physically, I want you guys to do this thought kind of experiment that if I take the left 50% and I add it with the right 50%, we get the whole bell. All right? That's the idea behind this. The whole bell. Similarly, we're going to proceed with this game. This is going to be interesting now. What percent of the bell is shaded here? I'm going to ask you guys here. What percent of the bell is shaded? Notice something here. The left portion is 50%. But they didn't label it. And they're not because they want you to understand that when you look at this picture, you look at this bell, right? They want you to know that since all of this here goes on forever to the left of the symmetry, we just talked about it measuring 50%. But on the right side, we have an additional 38%. So that means... 50%, an additional 38%. Does anybody know what does that give you? If you have 50% with an additional 38%, what does that equal? Does anybody know? What does that give you? Sorry. That should give you what? What's 50 plus 38? 88%. So we can say 88% of this bell is shaded here. Okay, you guys okay with that? 88% of the bell. Now, sorry. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah, left area is 50, right area is 38. So here's what we did. We took the left portion plus the right portion. We added that, and we're going to get 88% of the bell. So this is what you guys want to look over. Okay, this is an important detail. What percent of the bell is shaded? Let's take a look at this question here. Now, notice this. Similarly, they did not, like the last example, they told us this portion here to the left of the the mean, right, is 42% here. But this portion is blank. Anybody want to tell me? Let's think about this. What portion? What portion? What percent of the bell is shaded there? What do you guys think? What percent of the bell in blue on the right side is shaded? We have an answer. What do you guys think? What percent is shaded now on the right side? Thank you, Joanna. You got a nice 50%. Good job. Okay, good. That's 50% here, all right? So we got 50%. So what do we do then to find the total percent of the bell? Isn't it going to be the left area is 42, 
The right area is 50. Here's what we're saying. Take the 42 plus the 50, and what does that give you as a final answer, ladies and gentlemen? 98% of the bow here is shaded. That's what we need to do. So we're saying what percent of the bow here is shaded? All right, let's play in this game. Let's go to the next one. See if you guys can figure this one out. So what are they saying? To the left of this symmetric line, we got 42, and to the right, we got 38. Now they're saying what percent of the bow is shaded? We're talking completely shaded. How do we find this? What percent of the bow is shaded? What do you guys think? What would you guys say? What percent of the bow is shaded here? Jessica says the answer is 80%. Okay? We got all these answers 80%. Now let's think about this. The left area is 42. The right area is 38. So if I take 42 plus 38, the left portion plus the right portion, sure enough, we do get what? 80% of that bow. So 80% of the bow here, ladies and gentlemen, is shaded. So yes, all of you guys are getting the right answer. And yes, what do we do? We're adding the shaded numbers. Good. Is that easy? Right? Isn't that pretty easy? Pretty simple? We're adding these numbers here. Okay. And let's proceed here. Yeah, locked up on me. Let's go all the way down. Okay. We did the eighty eight. Yeah, we got 88. We did this. 92. Okay. 38 and 42. Good. Here's where we're at. We got locked up, just to let you guys know. Anyway. This is 80%. Pretty simple. Is that right? Good. Now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to get interesting. This is called something. I want you guys to know this picture. We call this a right tail. The reason this is known as a right tail is because you're looking at the area that's shaded to the right of some X value. This is it, it's supposed to be a tail. This is a tail, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they call this. A, this is what's known as a tail. And it's on the right side, so we call it a right tail. Similarly, this is called a left tail, okay? So we got a right tail where the area to the right of this X value goes on forever. And you got this uh, left tail where the area goes on forever as well. To infinity and beyond. Yes, that's what it means to go on forever. So these are tails. Let's do that again. To infinity and beyond. Right tail and left tail. They go on forever. One goes to the right forever. To infinity and beyond. And one goes to the left forever. To infinity and beyond. All right. We're going to find the area of the right tails and the left tails. We're playing the same game. Now, let's see if you guys are awake. This is going to separate the men from the boys and the girls from the women. 
what percent of the bell is shaded? We're talking in this right tail situation. So I'm going to ask you guys, tell me, what percent of the bell is shaded here? This is, this is kind of like a flaming hot situation. What percent of the bell is shaded? How do we find this area? Anybody know? Now let's see. We got an answer. Oh my God, you guys, Joanna, Jessica, 5%. Paul, oh, Leopoldo, 5% good. All uh, 5%. Wow, you guys are all saying 5%. Now, here's the thing about this. How do we find that percent? You see, this is what we want to do. So here's what I want you guys to know, how you find tails. You're going to need to know the following here. Here's what we're going to say. Let's note. Isn't it true? And Paula has the right idea. Okay. Isn't it true? That if we start with 50%, okay, you start with the whole right side. In other words, if we go back to this picture, I'm going to start with, let's find a highlighter. Let's do gray. This whole, I guess we can't even see that one. All right. This whole right side, if you guys remember, that measures what? This whole right side measures 50%. So if I start with 50%, and then you say to me, but I see some that's missing. Let's get rid of what's missing. I'm going to get rid of what's really missing is this. Is that true? And you say, well, how much is actually missing? 45% is missing, so I subtract what's missing. Take out what's missing. You started with a 50, and you just took out what's missing. Doesn't that leave? Doesn't that leave you with, ladies and gentlemen, the right tail? And the answer is yes. And so when I start with 50, I throw out 45. Yes, that gives me what? 5%. So... 5% is actually in that tail. And you guys are right. And you could double check. 45 plus 5 better be the right side, which is 50. So what percent of the bell is shaded? Yes, 5%. And this is what I say. You start with the right half, which is 50, and you throw out that subtraction, the missing area of 45, and you're left with 5. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's a picture of what I did. You start with the 50. You throw out now, subtraction, 45%. You end up with your right tail. Right tail being here, ladies and gentlemen, 5%. And that's what you guys do to find tails, really. Now, be careful because some people say, well, they ask, when do I add when do I subtract? When area is missing like this, you subtract. Okay, you think of a donut. Say, how do I make a donut? Well, you start with the dough. You throw out the, the middle portion. And guess what you end up with? Sorry, this is my donut. You end up with the donut. A left tail. What percent of the bell is shaded now on the left? Notice this portion is missing. 40% is missing. They want to know what percent of that bow here is shaded. So stop and think about this. Let's think about how this is going. What do you guys think? What's the deal? What percent of the bow is shaded? What 
you guys think? I'm not going to answer it. What percent's missing? 40 percent's missing. What percent is in the tail? And I guess we got what? Paula. Leopoldo, it's 10%. Right? Sandra is saying what? 10%. And yeah, Paula is saying, guess what? You take the 50 and you throw out the 40, right? That's what I said. You take the 50%, you thought what's missing. Woo! Typo, 40%. Change that. Start with the left side. And now you throw out again 40. So 50 minus 40. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, leaves you with 10% of the bow that's shaded here. So I wanted to go over this stuff with you guys here today. Okay, this is called playing what percent of the bow is shaded. This is going to be a part of how we learn how to work with a normal distribution. It's graphical in nature, and I would you know, encourage you guys to get used to drawing some of these pictures. You're going to see in the future of these bowels. And it's a pretty nice thing to do. We say now, what percent of the bowel is shaded? Oh, here's a good question for you guys. This is really going to get people to, to think. And I want to say, I make an observation to you, right? This is not, this is not a right tail. I got a bad feeling about this. All right, let's say that again. This is not a right tail. I got a bad feeling about this. What percent of the bell is shaded here? This is what we're looking for, and we don't have a right tail. We're going to have to make use of this information. So what do you guys think you're going to get here? What percent of the bow is shaded? Right. If I had flaming hots, I'd give them. Sorry. 14%. Let's see. We got a couple of people saying. We got three people. Paula, Jessica, Joanna are saying this is 14%. Let's see if that's correct. Remember how you do this. This is what, what you do, right? You see, the meaning of this portion here being 44%, what they're trying to communicate to you is um, all of this. Uh, let's go back. All of this here. It's not a right tail, so we don't go on forever. This is, in gray, 44%. So you start with 44%. And then you say, well, what's missing you throw out what is missing, and they're telling you what's missing. They're saying here, 30% is missing. So I, I subtract the 30% that's missing. I subtract how much is not there or making a donut. So 44 minus 30, you guys will find, is 14%. That's what they're saying. So 14%, let's erase all this, is left over. This is what you just found. That's the 14%. Okay? Sorry about that. And there you go. That's 14%. So now let's go down and say, yeah, start with the larger area, subtract the smaller area, and you end up with 14. That's what we did. We had the larger area here. 44 minus a smaller, and yes, we ended up with 14%. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. And yes, Paula, 
Jessica and Joanna, you guys are correct. 14%. Good. Those are the tough questions. What percent of the ballot is shaded? Let's see if you guys do the other side. Can you put that together? Tell me here, what percent of the bell is shaded now when you have this particular picture? No. Let's see. Jessica says it's 12%. Anybody else feel it's 12%? Paula says it's 12%. Anybody else? You have any other people with 12%? Joanna says it's 12%. Good. Okay, you guys. I believe it is 12%. All right, Leopoldo says it's 12%. Okay. I think you guys are correct. It's 12%. So let's see what this means. Right? They're telling you here that 36% from, the, from this point to this point, this is what they're communicating to you. This corresponds to 36%. So we start with... That 36%, and then we, we're making a donut. We're throwing out. How much do we throw out? You guys know what we're throwing out? What's missing? What's missing here is 24%. It's missing. We throw it out. Subtract. So what we have left, if we get rid of what's missing here, here's what's left. This portion here that's shaded is what's left. So 36 minus 24 becomes... 12%. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is 12%. So, I did describe what you do here. You start with the 36, the bigger area, and you fill out the smaller area, and you end up with 12. Here's the picture, right? 36 minus the 24%, you end up with the 12% answer. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you do this, okay? What percent of the bow here is shaded? Outstanding. And what I remark here to you guys at the bottom here is that the key to answering normal probability distribution questions is actually to, to move forward, work with what we call the standard normal distribution. And you go the standard normal Holy moly, yes. Here's what I want to remark. Let's write this down. When we say the random variable x, this is a random variable, and it's a continuous random variable, random variable, right? This random variable, mean, it means x could be any real number. That's what it means to be continuous. It's not finite. It's not like the binomial. With a binomial, x could be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, right? That's called a discrete random variable. x can't be 1.5. x can't be 1.28006693. So for a binomial and like the Poisson, they're both discrete because you're counting. You can start with 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Those are the only values you can have. For those two random variables. The normal distribution, however, is a continuous random variable. That means we can have any real number. You know, the height of min, even though the average is 67, it's an approximate to the nearest whole number. But, you know, if you were to measure much more accuracy, or much more accurate in your measurement, you might find you can continue decimals to any place you like. So our random variable here is actually going to be what's called continuous. It could be any real number. And okay, so it's any real number. Now, typically, you have 
a particular mean and a variance. So if you went back to every one of those settings I talked about, the height of min, right? Go back to, if I even go back to the browser, you go, oh, remember this, the height of min. Notice we had a mean of 67, a standard deviation of 2.9. Oh, okay, what about the weight of women? Oh, the mean of 107.6 and a standard deviation of 12.6. Oh, IQ scores of people, the mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. All right. The water, um, the, the volume of water in a 500 milliliter bottle manufactured by a particular company, mean is 508.6, standard deviation is 1.5. So every normal distribution, ladies and gentlemen, that variable X, the duration of pregnancies, mu is 268, sigma is 15. That variable X is a random variable that's continuous. It's modeled by a normal distribution with a particular mean. They're all different. Mean is 268, and standard deviation is 15. And you go to the pregnancy of women. Uh, I'm sorry, body temperature is 98.2. Standard deviation is 0.2. And so as I'm saying to you, every normal distribution question has its particular mean and standard deviation. And that's what they're saying here. This is a normal distribution. And let's let's get rid of that. This is normal. And then you say to me, but Mr. Judge, you have what's called a standard what? Normal distribution. And I say, yes, we do. Standard normal. Okay. Well, what this means is the standard normal is actually a normal distribution. But in this case, the mean is zero. And the standard deviation here is one. So it's a special normal distribution. You say special. Yeah. It's a special normal distribution and in fact it's so special it has its own random variable we represent it by the letter z this is called the normal standard normal distribution it has its own representation ladies and gentlemen z here and um this is kind of what we work with you see the idea is to convert every normal distribution to the standard and when you look at this picture now, you say, what does that standard normal distribution look like? Well, we've been describing it right here. Mu is zero. Sigma is one. The center of that distribution, ladies and gentlemen, the mean here again, is zero. Just like we just said. Right? Mu is zero. Sigma is one. So... This is represented now not by X. So if you take a look, we put a little Z there. It's kind of a Z axis. Some of you guys might say things to me like, this looks a little familiar. And I'll say to you, it's a lot familiar. This is the Z value, if you guys remember. So if you go all the way back in the day and we studied Z values, this is what we're talking about. Okay. So this is going to come up again. So nothing's wasted in this class. We work with everything. And Z values are going to come up. It represents the standard normal distribution. And I just want to say to you guys, um, if you said, oh, yeah, I remember working with this. Well, yeah, I remember anybody who scored, and I'll do this here. If you scored here back when you're looking with those Z values, remember this? This is how this kind of works. If you scored here, you got a C grade. That's Z values between negative 1 and 1. That's assuming test scores are normal. If it's normal, yes. This is what this looks like. Most people score between negative 1 and 1 as a, a Z value. Remember that nice Z value you had to use? You go, oh, yeah, X minus the mean over the standard deviation. But in this case, it's going to be X minus mu over sigma to let you guys know. And then 
you know, let's change this color. You said, okay, what if I scored though? Oops, wrong one. What if I scored on a test as a Z value between one and two? Well, you got to what? B, assuming again, grades are normally distributed. That's an assumption. And then you said, okay, what if I got above a two? Remember how rare that kind of was? We thought of that. Well, you got an A. So I'm, I'm taking a look at these special intervals, right? If you guys remember that. Anyway, the other end, since we're on the topic, right? Let's change these colors. All right, what if you're on the other side? You said, oh, if my if the grade distribution was normally distributed, well, you're between negative 2 and negative 1 as a Z value. You got a, a D grade. And uh, finally, just so you guys know, I don't know what's missing. Let's use green. Um, if you're below negative 2, remember, we gave you a fantastic. Now, this is working with those Z values uh, with, the, with the consistency, right? Standard deviations being 1. Um, that's with being within Caesar, within one standard deviation of the mean and, and, and so on. So we actually w worked with this distribution in the past. It was disguised. And this is the idea behind, you know, grading really that most people are around the center because intelligence is soon to be natural again. And they're really testing you, um, on your intelligence when you take a test. So, you know, that that's not completely true at all because there's other variables like, did you study? Right. Did you sleep the night before? You know, how have you been been doing things? Right. So that's really there's other lurking variables here. But people in the middle there get the C's and and so on. So it does look familiar to us. We've worked with this before. I want to just remind you here. This is the standard normal distribution. And the key to working with this is using the standard normal distribution and the bell shaped curve. You know. Okay, you guys okay with this? So I know, yes, Paula, it's a pretty good idea here, right? This is fantastic, this distribution. Uh, hopefully it's clear for you guys. If not, because after this uh, lecture, I got to take a look and see what the hell's going on. You know, I updated the software, and I don't know, every morning things get to be a little finicky. So I'm hoping the calculus class actually, um, nobody mentioned it was blurry, but maybe everybody was asleep there. You know, because we're always kind of waking up, but, you know, uh, so hopefully this is kind of clear. But, yeah, this is kind of where things come from, ladies and gentlemen. So, anyway, this is an introduction um, to working with, first of all, starting to talk to you guys about what things behave normally. Again, a very technical thing is... Well, when most of the distribution is centered around the mean and it tapers off, the further extreme you go above the mean and the left, and if you have this symmetry, well, it's a normal distribution. Um, a lot of things can be approximated normally, thought of as normally or as normal. Things that, that grow naturally, things that are supposed to be reproduced, like the height of men, supposed to be the same. It isn't supposed to be. Nature doesn't reproduce things the same way twice even snowflakes ladies and gentlemen snowflakes are not exactly the same okay well what about the weight of men well same thing but you know there's other lurking variables there's other factors um same thing for the height and weight of women it's nothing special about men nothing special about women we can even extend this idea to uh breeding of of pets you might have you know cats a particular breed of cats or dogs the standard there for those is a particular weight and height, believe it or not. And, um, of course, nature and man can't reproduce things the same way twice. And so there is some variation there. But there's a typical, the mean, and then there's the variation, the standard deviation. Intelligence, body temperature, you name it, anything you make, you try to duplicate over and over like a cookie cutter, it's not the same. Can't be. There's going to be some small variation. It might be harder to measure. It might be very hard to measure, but it's going to be there. So it's kind of a really interesting idea and a philosophical idea 
that not everything can be reproduced the same way twice. And that's where the normal distribution comes in. So I wanted to introduce you, this to you this morning. And, um, you know, next time we're going to get to start to use some of these tools here to answer questions. But it's just the introduction of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the introduction. I hope you guys were able to see clearly this stuff because I worked very, very hard for this. Um, we got a question here. We upload examples because if I want to take notes, I can't actually see very well some of the problems. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hopefully this is, is this something new, Paula, by the way? Just kind of curious. Is it just for today? I hope it's just today. But the answer to your question, Paula, is yeah, eventually I will be doing that. Eventually we will um, be doing some examples and then uploading some further examples eventually. But like I said, I've been trying to get this up and running for you guys and seeing how this goes. Anyway, this is an introduction. Um, if you wanted to get started, let me say something further. We go to the browser and we get out of this browser and I say to you guys, get out of here. Remember this portion here on my website. Go all the way down to... Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Paula. We'll have to fix this. This is crazy. This is ruining my day. Anyway, some of you guys may want to see and go out to this normal distribution here. And if you remember, go and hit play. Those are real ELAC students, by the way. You ready, Eddie? All right, we're okay. gonna play, play this, this game. game. Here is playing what percent of the ballot is shaded. All right, let's, well, let's just, uh, just uh, let's, let's just, just talk, talk about, about this here. here. Okay. okay. Do you guys, you guys recall? recall? So go to the website, and if you wanted to see how to do some of these things, I'm gonna Four skip over. Six, six, um, from the worksheet, statistics section twelve. If you want to get started, you can. So there's some homework there. So you can actually watch that particular video if you just wanted to get started. And I will now look into the issues associated with the quality. I did upload the, I upgrade the software yesterday. So maybe that's an issue. Who knows? I got to figure it out. Welcome to my nightmare. So good luck to you guys for today. Have a great weekend and stay safe. If you have any other questions or issues, come to the office hours. And if you can't get in, email me, let me know, and we'll get you in. So take it easy, have a great day, and I'll have to fix some of these things now. Okay, thank you, and um, stay safe.